All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with that, we're going to start our uh, our nightly round of reports here for April the 13th of 2022 uh, involving the ongoing war and crisis in Ukraine. We have a very busy tonight, a uh, very a very busy night uh, tonight of reports uh, uh, coming at you guys. We're going to be with you again here from about 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, and we're going to be uh, uh, going over... Uh, not only all of the headlines for this evening, uh, but we'll be going through the intricate reports uh, from about the past 24 hours and going in depth uh, to everything that has happened. Um, and then uh, towards the end of the show, of course, we'll be uh, looking into some of our open source maps, um, things like Live UA Map, etc. We'll be going through all of the, uh, the intricacies there, going into some in-depth analysis. Um, as well as later in the show, we'll be having a Q&A with uh, the live chats on YouTube, Twitch, and Discord. Uh, so if you would like to uh, uh, interact, with us, uh, interact with us then uh, and answer or ask some questions, uh, that will be the time for that. Uh, I think uh, to start, we're going to first go through some of the uh, major headlines uh, this evening. Um, uh, firstly, uh, on our Situation Room... Uh, Back in our Situation Room feed here, uh, we were watching uh, a few of our cameras. There's been uh, some activity in and around Kharkiv. Uh, we've seen uh, flashes and signs of activity on cams 1, 2, and 3 out of Kharkiv this evening. So we're going to keep those up on screen so that uh, if we see any activity on those, we'll be able to... Um, to take note on those. I think, uh, firstly, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go through and, uh, again, go through all of the nightly headlines uh, just to get everybody caught up on the news of the day. Uh, before I do that, though, uh, if you can, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, uh, you can hit the follow button. It's the best way. Uh, subscribing and following is the best way to get notifications when the streams go live or when our new videos uh, go live on the channel. Uh, nextly, if you need uh, any of the sources if you're looking for any of the sources of this information, things like uh, the open source in intelligence maps that we use, uh, things like the naval uh, the naval maps, uh, the the you know the force troop movement maps, etc. Uh, if you're looking for any of our camera streams, if you're looking for any of the reporting, you can find a lot of that stuff in the description uh, below the live stream. Uh, and if anything uh, is not there that you're looking for, you can always find it over on our Discord server. Uh, a lot of the reports we'll be bringing you tonight. In fact, we're going to have a, uh, a section in the night uh, after I after I bring you guys the main headlines. We're going to jump over into our situation room on the Discord server, and uh, we're going to take a look at all of the community aggregated uh, uh, news and reports that has been brought together uh, by our over 16,000 member strong Discord. Uh, again, the link to that is in the description uh, below. Okay, so uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get uh, all of our uh, main headlines to you guys today. Um, I guess uh, starting off tonight, uh, some of the big headlines here is, again, you have the uh, continuation of this chemical attack story in Mariupol. Okay. You also have the uh, this information coming out of this uh, Russian ship that has been, uh, that has been sunk. Um, uh, amongst a few other uh, main headline topics, we'll be going into intricacies on some of the, like the chemical attack. I'll, I'll go to, into that maybe a little bit later um, as we're still waiting to get more concrete information on that story. The main headlines uh, mainly for uh, this evening, though, uh, is that uh, Russia, again, continues to build up its military uh, for the expected offensive in the east of Ukraine. We've been talking about that the past few nights, uh, including ground troops, uh, artillery systems, and helicopters that they've been moving into place over the past few days, and uh, actually about the past week or two now, uh, they've been shuffling these forces around. Really quickly, uh, let, me get, um, let me get that Cam-1 uh, updated for you guys here, just to make sure that it's live. There we go. Okay, so again, uh, they've been shuffling around uh, both ground troops, artillery systems, uh, and helicopters, uh, 
A statement from the Pentagon earlier said uh, Russian forces are gathering on the Russian side of the border and moving into Ukraine's eastern Donbass region, where Moscow has recognized two self-proclaimed separatist republics. Earlier, Russia's defense ministry said more than 1,000 Ukrainian Marines surrendered in the port of besieged Mariupol. Ukrainian officials said a brigade of its Marines in the area successfully completed a maneuver to reconnect uh, with other Ukrainian forces. Neither claim has been independently verified. Uh, at this time, Mariupol remains contested, uh, said the Pentagon. So to everybody in the chat tonight that has been asking, you know, has Mariupol fallen or that saying that Mariupol has fallen? At this time, it has not been confirmed in any way. Uh, it has been confirmed. What has been confirmed is that Mariupol uh, is still under heavy contesting uh, at this time, uh, at this hour. Uh, moving on, the U.S. is sending another $800 million worth of weapon systems and other security assistance to Ukraine. Uh, this was actually reported on last night. Uh, there was a, a, a further uh, update to that today, um, stating that they are going to that, that this package is going to include uh, artillery systems, artillery rounds, armored personnel carriers. Uh, Arm, uh, additional helicopters. Uh, to date, the U.S. has sent over about $2 billion worth of military assistance to Ukraine. Uh, the Kremlin earlier uh, described, uh, uh, sorry, decried as unacceptable uh, President Biden's comment uh, that Russian President Vladimir Putin is committing genocide in Ukraine. Uh, the, U.S. Uh, the U.S. has historically um, uh, really used the word genocide uh, as a violation of international law that is harder to prove than war crimes or crimes against humanity as it requires evidence of intent. Uh, Biden has escalated his rhetoric in a Tuesday speech as he blamed the Russian invasion for higher gas prices. Uh, a, a National Security Council representative said the shift in rhetoric from previously accusing Russia of atrocities and war crimes did not indicate a shift in the U.S. response. However, again, it is alarming uh, that this escalation of rhetoric is occurring, even if it is, uh, even if it is, you know, again, um, even if it is required, you know, on the diplomatic stage, it is alarming to see the the rhetoric, uh, the level of rhetoric get ramped up. Um, uh, as you know, that obviously increases the, uh, you know, the, the volatility of the situation. Rock Joe, thank you so much for subscribing there. Much appreciated. Uh, again, I'm trying to get this uh, Kharkiv ski cam back up for you guys. Stand by for that. Okay, there we go. Get our Odessa cam back up on top of that. Okay, so moving on from that, uh, uh, the presidents of Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia have traveled to Kyiv now. Uh, they are the latest European leaders to visit Ukraine with a message of political support and military assistance. Earlier, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, uh, Boris Johnson uh, toured Kyiv with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. So you're seeing basically all of the Baltic nations uh, are now uh, visiting Kyiv. Uh, in an effort to uh, increase uh, support for the country there. Economists uh, are now warning Russia is on the verge of defaulting on its foreign debt uh, for the first time since the uh, uh, Bolshevik Revolution more than a century ago. Uh, the country has blown past two payment deadlines on bonds sold to foreign investors, which it was supposed to pay in dollars. Citing several sanctions imposed by the U.S. and its allies, Russia uh, made the payments in rubles. Again, uh, you know, with the issues with their their market uh, that we're seeing, with uh, the contraction of their economy overall, uh, we could expect this to be a uh, a continuing issue. A little bit of other uh, smaller headlines uh, that are worth mentioning. Ukrainians have arrived at the U.S.-Mexico border uh, by the thousands. Uh, there are actually uh, refugees trying to make their way into the United States through Mexico at this time. Uh, this was reported earlier today um, that uh, over uh, over 1,000 had been uh, reported so far uh, down uh, on that border, the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, that's one of many countries where there is uh, uh, refugees looking to make their way uh, to seek asylum. Um, uh, residents of a devastated attorney uh, uh, ponder uh, after a Russian siege ends. Um, there was, again, that attack there in Cherniv. Um, it, it, Cherniv has been uh, uh, hit and bombarded quite a few times since the war uh, began. 
Uh, Kharkiv also has been uh, hit quite hard over the past week. In fact, just tonight we've been seeing uh, Cam 1, Cam 2, and Cam 3 there out of Kharkiv have been having quite a few uh, flashes of light and uh, what are, uh, seem to be explosions and exchanges of fire in the background there. So earlier this evening, another one of the big uh, headlines here is mass surrender of troops in Mariupol. Uh, again, we're still waiting to get concrete information on this, but uh, Russia in a statement earlier said that more than 1,000 Ukrainian Marines have surrendered in the besieged port of Mariupol. Uh, this, is, again, was uh, originally reported on by the BBC who relayed this information. I believe it was the Russian Defense Ministry that actually made the original uh, uh, the, the original uh, statements on those. However, the city's deputy mayor, uh, Serhii Orlov, uh, told the BBC that Ukrainian troops uh, there were still fighting. Um, so again, and the Pentagon confirmed earlier this evening uh, that Mariupol is still in uh, is still under conflict uh, at this time in multiple different areas. When we get into the maps a little bit later, I'm going to go in kind of in depth as to where the Ukrainians are really holding territory uh, in some of those areas, and we'll kind of talk about maybe what their options are going to be moving forward here. So a uh, Ukrainian, uh, again, a uh, Ukrainian official earlier said that uh, Moscow had been hit, uh, hit by two missiles, uh, but not give any uh, any evidence that that's Russian ship. Again, uh, the 12, uh, it was a 12-ton ship, uh, had a crew of about 500, uh, and they ha are believed to have abandoned ship at this time. We're still waiting to get, uh, this is a breaking story, we're still waiting to get confirmed information on that, though. Uh, but the Ukrainians did earlier come out with reports saying that they had hit the ship uh, with two missiles. Um, and had not been able to provide any evidence so far. So again, we're, we're still calling that unconfirmed until we can get some more concrete evidence of that. However, it does look like they have managed to uh, down that Russian vessel. Ukraine's uh, President Vladimir Zelensky called uh, for an oil embargo uh, in his nightly address on Wednesday. First of all, uh, this is a quote by him. He says, uh, first of all, we need an oil embargo and Europe's clear readiness to give up all Russian energy. The European Union must stop sponsoring Russia's military machine. Again, in that uh, response, uh, sorry, that uh, uh, statement there by President Zelensky earlier this evening. Uh, the U.S. State Department, again, kind of uh, corroborating with that report I gave a few minutes ago about, uh, you know, uh, Biden's remarks of genocide. Uh, the U.S. Uh, State Department earlier uh, today, Wednesday, defended Biden's charge uh, that Russia is carrying out uh, genocide in Ukraine, saying his forces are trying to destroy the country and its civilian population. Again, this is a, a U.S. State Department uh, statement uh, and saying that Biden leveled the accusation, uh, uh, leveled the accusation at President Vladimir uh, Putin's forces for the first time on Tuesday. Uh, uh, saying, I am going to predict that what President Biden called uh, it is what we will ultimately likely find when we are able to gather uh, all of this evidence. Again, we're kind of speaking to some of the atrocities we've seen uh, carry out in some of the suburbs around Kiev, places like uh, uh, Bucha, uh, Irpin, etc., uh, he, he also went on to say that because of what is happening on the ground is indeed not an accident. French President Emmanuel Macron has declined uh, to repeat Biden's accusation that Russia was carrying out genocide against Ukrainians, warning that verbal escalations would not help end the war. The U.S. president said on Tuesday it had become clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out the idea of even being uh, able to uh, be a Ukrainian. Uh, in response to Kremlin spokesperson uh, Dmitry Peskov, uh, described Biden's comments as, I quote, unacceptable. Um, again, I reported that earlier this evening. So again, uh, speaking more to, I know some people were mentioning the Marines, uh, the possible surrender of those Marines there and the besieged uh, port city of Mariupol. 
Um, again, those claims coming from Moscow. In one of the most critical battles uh, of the war, again, Russia's defense ministry said on Wednesday that 1,026 soldiers of the Ukraine's 36 Marine Brigade, uh, to be specific there, including 162 officers, had voluntarily laid down their arms near the city's uh, Lysich Iron uh, and Steelworks. Uh, there was no independent confirmation of the claim at this time, however. The Russian retreat uh, uh, from around Kiev has led to the discovery of a large number uh, of apparently massacred civilians, again, uh, drawing international con condemnation and calls for war crimes in the investigation, again, speaking to uh, areas like Bucha uh, and uh, Irpin. Uh, Russian troops are reportedly suffering from low morale and disenchantment among some of the younger troops. While speaking at a press conference today, Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby also said that the Russian troop leaders were frustrated at Russia's invasion of Ukraine, that, uh, that the invasion continues, uh, especially after the leaders, again, had been kind of given uh, kind of the, the inclination that this would be over quickly. Uh, so again, more evidence uh, pointing towards uh, that their morale is, is suffering heavily after the losses... Um, uh, that they've had over the past uh, month or two here since this war began. Zelensky uh, told Estonio, Estonian MPs, again, uh, who visited uh, uh, Kiev uh, earlier, without providing evidence that Russia was using phosphorus bombs in Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian forces in Mariupol said a drone had dropped a poisonous substance on the city, but there has been no independent confirmation that Russia uh, used the banned chemical weapons. Uh, a, a U.S. intelligence uh, analysis uh, a day ago had, had uh, predicted that it possibly was these phosphorus agents that were used. There were also uh, reports saying it could have possibly been a CS gas, a, a uh, crowd dispersal agent that had been possibly mixed with a more vile, uh, volatile uh, chemical agent. Um, this could be uh, what we uh, what what we seen what we have seen here in Mariupol take place uh, in this chemical attack is possibly phosphorus or possibly um, a again a crowd dispersal agent that has been maybe mixed with something to make it a little bit more volatile, a little bit more uh, uh, harder to re uh, resist. You know, uh, take something like uh, tear gas and make it a little bit uh, you know spice it up a bit. Um, uh, to make it, again, harder to be uh, thwarted, you know, with things like respirators and gas masks, etc. Um, I'm not exactly sure w what the specifics uh, of that would be, like what type of chemicals they would be using for that. There's been a lot of speculation on that front. Again, we're still waiting to get concrete information out of Mariupol. Uh, right back to the Marines, the surrender of the Marines in, the, uh, in Mariupol and then this chemical attack. They're both in the same category at this time of unconfirmed and requiring more evidence. Finland's Prime Minister Asana Marin said uh, the country should, uh, sorry, would decide on whether to apply for NATO membership within weeks. Uh, her quote there, speaking at a joint news conference with her Swedish counterpart, Marin said that as a NATO partner but not a member, Finland was not covered under Article 5, which states that an attack on one member, again, should be considered as an attack on all. Um, the UK government has imposed sanctions on another 206 individuals in response to Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, including 178 people it said were involved in uh, propping up the self-proclaimed republics in Luhansk and Donetsk. Uh, Liz Trust, the foreign secretary, said the latest sanctions were imposed in a direct response to the horrific rocket attacks on a train station uh, in Kramatorsk, eastern Ukraine, that killed dozens of civilians. I know uh, we saw that footage earlier this week. It was absolutely devastating, that attack there on that train station. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister uh, Wednesday, Erna uh, Veryshuk, again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, said it was not possible to open any humanitarian corridors on Wednesday. She said the situation along the routes was too dangerous and accused Russian forces of violating an agreement to halt shooting while people escape. Again, this comes as a repeating pattern uh, by the Russians of ignoring these ceasefire agreements and opening fire on, uh, on, on civilians uh, as they're you know, trying to evacuate. So Fancy Hat has alerted me that uh, Cam1, again, is having an issue there. There we go. I got it back up for you guys. So yes, in Cam1, we have uh, we have Kharkiv Ski Cam. In the lower left of the Kharkiv Ski Cam, we have a random Odessa shot, skyline shot. Uh, in Cam2, I have uh, Dnipro, uh, the Dnip Dnipro region. Uh, Cam3 is Kharkiv, the coke plant there in Kharkiv, overlooking the skyline. 
Uh, Cam 4 is uh, Makivka, also in the east. Uh, and then Kramatorsk in Cam 6, and Odessa in Cam 5. Okay. All right, so moving on here. Uh, I'm going to kind of go into a little bit more depth in the uh, claims of the Russian warship uh, being hit with a missile strike. Again, this was reported uh, within the past few hours here that Ukraine claims it hit a Russian warship uh, with a missile strike. Uh, Russia, again, coming out with reports saying otherwise uh, over the past uh, few hours here. Conflicting reports again have emerged from the Russians and Ukrainians about an incident involving a Russian warship in the Black Sea. No evidence has emerged to support either claim, and CNN is unable to independently verify what took place. Uh, what the Russians say is that the Russian Defense Ministry again claimed Wednesday that the uh, the Russian warship uh, Moskova was evacuated after a fire on board detonated ammunition, seriously damaging the vessel, according to Russian state media. Now, the Ukrainians are saying, uh, an hours earlier they made this statement, uh, Odessa State Regional Administrator Maxim Merachenko claimed in a post on Telegram that Ukrainian forces had hit the ship with a Neptune uh, missile, causing serious damage to it. Again, there is still an active naval presence off of Odessa, so it is possible that they did indeed hit one of those vessels there. Again, it is still unconfirmed. We're having conflicting reports, so we need uh, to wait to get more information on that. A little bit of uh, analysis on this. Uh, there were large storms over the Black Sea, obscuring satellite imagery and sensory satellite data. Um, uh, there has been really nobody able to visually confirm uh, that the ship was hit. Uh, we don't have any, again, confirmed images from firms from our, uh, we checked uh, the NASA firms map there, which shows fires burning. We had nothing on firms. Uh, we have nothing on our satellite imagery as well uh, that can uh, pr that can provide any light, shed any light to this story so far. Uh, so there was, again, that weather system over the Black Sea there, uh, and uh, it made it hard for any v uh, visual uh uh, confirmation with things like that that firm system. Uh, the Russian Defense Ministry has also not posted any official statement to its Telegram channel acknowledging the evacuation of fire, fire on board. Again, that was uh, earlier. That was in an earlier statement. They now have, in the past hour, that came out on Telegram uh, saying that uh, that was an evacuation. Um, that was the Defense Ministry. Yeah, yeah, which came out a little bit later there. Uh, Russian state media outlets uh, TASS and uh, RIA reported the ship's crew was evacuated uh, and that uh, the cause of the fire was still being established. According to the Defense Ministry, the Moskova is a missile cruiser uh, that was built and commissioned in 1982. Satellite images from Maxar Technologies, again, uh, show the ship just northwest of Sevastopol, Crimea, on April 10th, uh, so just three days ago. So that is that does kind of add up. That is kind of consistent, and uh, it could be possible that uh, the Ukrainians did, in fact, hit that ship. We're still waiting to get more information. Uh, so... I, w I spoke earlier about the the sanctions being imposed uh, by some Western countries. I guess another, I guess uh, if we're to be thorough here, uh, we could also report uh, Russia again announces retaliatory sanctions on 398 members of U.S. Congress. Uh, this came today. Russia said Wednesday that it had imposed sanctions on 398 members of U.S. Congress in retaliation against Washington, blacklisting hundreds of Russian lawmakers last month. Moscow's mirror sanctions include the leadership and committee chairman of the lower house of the United States Congress, the Russian foreign minister said in a statement the U.S. Treasury Department on March 24th announced sanctions against 328 members of the 450-seat Russian State Duma, the lower level of the two-tiered Russian parliament. Um, again, uh, another report from earlier today, uh, Russian, uh, the Russian military has now threatened, uh, continuing threats uh, to strike Ukrainian decision-making centers, so some of their command and control centers, which they have uh, they have vowed to do this before. This is a new statement, though. Uh, the Russian military, again, in a statement Wednesday, threatened to strike Ukrainian decision-making centers, those, uh, in, those in uh, Ukraine's capital, so in Kyiv, uh, in response to what Russia said were attempts of sabotage and strikes on Russian territory. We see attempts of sabotage and 
and strikes by Ukrainian troops on objects of the territory of the Russian Federation, said Russian Ministry of Defense spokesperson um, uh, Major Gen Igor uh, Koroshenkov uh, in a statement. If such cases continue, the armed forces of the Russian Federation will strike at decision-making centers, including in Kiev, uh, from which the Russian army has thus far refrained. Um, I think they're referring to buildings like... Uh, uh, the presidential palace there in Kiev, uh, amongst other command and control sites. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense has neither confirmed nor denied, uh, uh, sorry, uh, actually, Russia earlier this month accused Ukraine of mounting a helicopter attack on a fuel depot. Again, we, re we reported on that earlier this month. Uh, Russia, uh, the Ukrainian Ministry uh, of Defense has neither confirmed nor denied that attack on that fuel depot uh, at this time. So moving on here, uh, again, in another Pentagon statement today, uh, the U.S. military is looking at options to train Ukrainians on switchbait drones and other systems, further options. Uh, the Pentagon is examining options on how it can train more Ukrainian forces to use these switchblade drones the U.S. is providing uh, to the Ukrainian, Ukrainian military. According to a senior uh, defense official, future trainings might occur with the U.S. troops who have deployed to bolster NATO's eastern flank over the past several months. Amid Russia's attacks on Ukraine, uh, the official... Uh, uh, told reporters Wednesday, the Pentagon was looking at a range of options, uh, his quote there, for training Ukraine on the switchblade drones and other weapon systems. Uh, on top of the trainings that occurred with Ukrainians who already were in the United States for previously scheduled engagements uh, earlier uh, this month and actually earlier this year. Uh, Russia, uh, again, could relaunch uh, offensive to conquer the Donbass region in days, uh, said a French military spokesperson today. Uh, the Russian military is potentially preparing for a large-scale offensive in the east of Ukraine in the coming days. French military spokesperson Colonel Pascal Lani, uh, Lani said on Wednesday, uh, with the next few days, 10 or ten days or so, maybe Russia could relaunch its efforts with a large-scale offensive in the east and south to conquer Donetsk and Luhansk regions or to even push as far as the Dnipro River if its capacities allow it. Okay, and again, this is speaking to the, the multiple uh, battle options which we went over in last night's stream in that guideline that I uh, showed you guys last night. Uh, he, there's many different options that they have uh, at their disposal, um, and it is very uh, uh, it's very possible that they could move as far as the Dnipro and even farther. Um, again, it, it, the terrain in the east is a lot different than the terrain was in and around Kiev, and so it's going to be a lot harder for the Ukrainians, uh, I, I believe, uh, to... You know, thwart some of their uh, Russian hardware with things like the traditional anti-tank guided munition systems that they've been using, things like the javelins. That's why they're using, they're switching to these switchblades. Now, it remains to be seen if these drones will be able to do as good of a job as some of those uh, man-pad portable defense systems, those those anti-tank systems. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, the Ukrainians will be able to, uh, you know, uh, figure things out here. Uh, but again, all analysis is pointing towards it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them in the east here uh, than it was. Uh, in the north, up by Kiev, etc. However, it remains to be seen. We were surprised the first time uh, that the Russians' failures um, in their phase one of this war. Uh, so it's very possible that they were that they will also falter as greatly here in the second phase of the war. But it's important not to underestimate uh, your enemy. Of course, uh, those options again, including capturing the Donbass, uh, which I talked about yesterday in that guide. Also, uh, capturing the, the second option then is to capture the Donbass plus Mariupol, uh, effectively creating that land bridge down to the Zaporizhia Oblast and down into Crimea. Okay, so that's always possible as well as a second option for them. As a third option to capture the Donbass and the southern coast, I believe that would probably come before uh, a push to the Dnipro, uh, as they really would like to capture the entirety of that southern coast. Um, that is always possible. And then, of course, the uh, fourth and fifth options being a, uh, a capture all the way to the Dnieper uh, and possibly even farther to the MO5. The Dnieper, though, is the most likely as it, it provides that natural uh, barrier there, which could provide a good border. Um, 
Uh, that that statement earlier, Alani uh, told journalists he also noted that there were no significant advances at this time in terms of territorial gains for the Russian forces on the Eastern Front, uh, but that they were, they have been you know seeing these reports of all of this buildup over the past few days to a week now as Russia looks to consolidate these forces, uh, and the Ukrainians are doing the same thing. The Ukrainians are trying to dig in on that Eastern Front there as much as they possibly can. Um, uh, you know, to, to thwart this possible next Russian, uh, you know, invade, not incursion, not invasion. They're already in the country, but what I'm saying is uh, this next uh, phase, this next um, uh, push forward, so to speak, by these Russian forces. So uh, earlier this evening, uh, President uh, De Quay of Colombia uh, made a statement saying, saying he is ready to step up energy supplies to the West to replace Russian imports. Again, there's been a lot of talk you know, about uh, alienating Russian gas uh, from the European economy. Uh, Europe, Europe is very dependent. The U.S. is very dependent uh, in some regards on Russian fuel. Uh, and so and that fuel coming into you know, our, the entire uh, oil economy uh, is dependent in some way on that Russian fuel, and so uh, if uh, if we can diversify, if Colombia can bring in possibly uh, y- y- some oil to the table, then you know it might uh, help ease uh, kind of the strain on uh, on our you know on the the fuel economy here, so to speak, uh, moving forward as this war progresses. Again, earlier, uh, the White House stating the uh, U.S. is an early talks to send high-ranking official to Ukraine. Decision far from finalized. Again, this comes as uh, they want to get in on, on the action there. You see all of the Baltic, uh, pr- the, the, you know, those delegates from the Baltic states today going to Kiev uh, and visiting. You see Boris Johnson going to Kiev. Uh, and so it's about time that the U.S. sends somebody as well. It's very important that we do so. It's very important on the global stage that they do so at this time. All righty. Uh, this, this report actually earlier came, came today. Uh, a group of Ukrainians tried to take a boat to safety uh, and were hit by Russian rockets. Um, uh, again, uh, this was uh, uh, reported earlier today, uh, but I believe these uh, actions actually happened earlier. Yes, this was from the Kherson region uh, that that occurred. Uh, the firing was made using a multiple rocket launching system, possibly GRAD, uh, but we would only be able to tell the exact type of weapon only after the forensic investigation is completed. Um, one of the survivors also said he believed they were hit by the Russian GRAD rockets. Again, a pretty uh, dramatic story there coming out earlier this evening. So now, I think we're going to switch gears. Now that we've gone through the major headline topics uh, this evening... I think we're going to switch gears over into kind of looking into some of the intricacies and some of the individual reports that are unfolding uh, here in Ukraine. So I think we'll start that uh, probably by going into depth on... Actually, you know what? We're, we're going to go through the Situation Room, uh, and I'm going to look at some of the reports, community-aggregated uh, reports from today. I think that would be a good option there. Again, uh, really quickly, thank you to everybody that's tuning in this evening. So glad to have you guys uh, uh, tuning in uh, to the stream uh, tonight. Okay, so, uh, th- okay, well, let me see here. I'm, I think I'm going to have to switch over to our our newsroom temporarily. And then uh, I'm going to go here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through our situation room updates here. We'll go from most recent uh, to the uh, to the. We'll go from the bottom up here. Again, uh, uh, somebody posted from the political earlier. Sin actually posted a few of these. Um, this is from the Kiev Independent here, actually corroborating uh, that last report that I did there. Uh, hold on, let me see. Where's the actual? Uh, the two U.S. officials told Political that Biden administration is currently discussing sending a high-level official to Kiev to show further support to Ukraine. There was a few, also a article from Politico here uh, showing that headline as well. So they are looking to get a official sent in to, um, uh, to Kiev uh, as a delegate there.
So here's uh, an image. Uh, a Russian source is saying that Muscova has sunk and that the explosion was from a Ukrainian Neptune missile strike. Uh, here's that a tweet there. Uh, yeah, a Russian source is saying that Muscova has sunk and that the explosion was from a Ukrainian Neptune missile strike. Apparently, Ukraine flew a TP-2 UCAV to distract the ship while it was targeted by the Neptune. The ship rolled onto its side after the strike. So that's very interesting there. Uh, report from uh, Promi. Promi, thank you. Uh, Promi, thank you so much for uh, putting that in the situation room. Uh, from your maiden, uh, your maiden uh, PR on uh, uh, on Twitter here. Uh, here's an image apparently showing uh, the Russian warship Moskova uh, in uh, kind of night vision here. You can see uh, burning off the coast there. Again, unconfirmed. We're still waiting to get some information on that at this time. Uh, moving on here, uh, Brains posted this in the uh, Discord uh, Situation Room. Uh, here's a little bit more about what we know about the Russian warship strike. The Moskova was reported hit by two Ukrainian missiles late on Wednesday night, a Ukrainian official earlier said. The 12,500-ton ship has a crew of around 500 Russian... Uh, Around 500, Russian news agencies said a Muska, uh, Muscova was armed with 16 anti-ship Vulcan cruise missiles, which have a range of at least 700 kilometers or 440 miles. The Muscova is the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet. Uh, last month, Ukraine said it had destroyed a large Russian landing support ship, the Orsk, on uh, the smaller Sea of Azov to the northeast of the Black Sea. So you see that image there posted. Thank you so much for posting that in the Situation Room brains. Again, a lot of information in our situation room. I'm not going to go through all of them here. Uh, there's a lot of sources uh, that people have posted here. In um, in Cayuca, here's another one Cayuca posted earlier. Uh, Why nailing Moscovo was vital to the Ukrainian air power uh, in the south and Black Sea. Uh, she carries 64 S300, uh, S-300s. S She's basically a massive area denial asset for Ukrainian aviation in the south. If she's down, they're going to swarm that front with air support. Yeah, so so hitting that ship uh, was, was very important. Uh, very, very important for the Ukrainians uh, to down that, that vessel. This was posted by Kayuka earlier. Uh, Uh, this is from Wall Street Journal. Uh, we are going to get paywalled, though, when I bring it up. But uh, it's the secret of Ukraine's military success, uh, years of military training. Thank you for posting this. Yeah, our years of uh, NATO training. Again, I, I have actually spoke quite a bit about this to length on the show in the past. Um, it is directly why they are being, why are they so, why are they uh, so successful uh, now uh, in Ukraine? This is an unconfirmed tweet, uh, again, posted by Kayuka in the uh, Situation Room earlier. Troops stationed in Chernobyl will likely die by the end of the year. They, they dug trenches in contaminated woods and, uh, and ate out of plates left in contaminated houses. Russian command uh, should be tried for crimes against their own soldiers. Again, um, we're going to have to uh, uh, wait to see more information, you know, as the years, as the months and the years progress on uh, on on what happened to those Russian soldiers that dug in those trenches there at Crimea. I know I went in depth into this last night. Again, more reports about that uh, Russian flagship uh, being downed. Uh, here's an interesting one earlier uh, from Dave Keating on Twitter here. This was posted by Tactical Beard in the Situation Room. Thank you for that, Tactical Beard. comes from a verified account from Dave Keating. I'm not actually sure who that is. But, uh, it's basically, it states, Sweden and Finland's prime ministers have just held a joint press conference outlining plans to join NATO. Expected to uh, move first PM uh, Sweden. Expected to move first PM, uh, or actually, sorry, that's that's uh, Finland. Uh, expected to move first. Uh, Prime Minister Marin says uh, she won't give a timetable, but it will happen quite fast. Within weeks, uh, not within months, we will have the discussion. Again, more evidence there of uh, possibly some more countries that are joining that NATO security pact. Uh, this was uh, posted again by Kayuka earlier in the Situation Room, uh, post by Insider, uh, stating Kremlin leaves captured Putin ally Viktor Mendevichuk uh, out to dry, saying Russia doesn't want to exchange prisoners for him. Again, I, I had reported on this last night um, that uh, that Russian leader, um, uh, 
uh, was captured. I showed a picture uh, of him uh, captured there by those Ukrainian uh, forces. Again, uh, to corroborate, corroborate and uh, uh, kind of give some more uh, fuel to the uh, uh, report I, I had posted on earlier, um, uh, Russia, again, threatens... Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Hold on, let's go to the... Uh, Let's go to the main, let's go to the pointer screen. So you guys can see this. There we go. All right, so uh, Russia. Um, hold on here. Oh, yeah, we need to, we need to, one second, guys. Let me shift that down a bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, so uh, Russia. Uh, threatens to strike at Ukraine's command centers in Kiev. Again, this is from the Kiev Independent. All right, so we've been getting concrete stuff from them uh, since day one. As for you know the Ukrainian narrative, this is this is like the official I, on Twitter. In my opinion, Kiev Independent is probably one of the. Uh, besides, you know the official government uh, Twitter Twitter accounts. This is a really good source uh, to get some uh, information out of the Ukrainians. Uh, Russia threatens to strike at Ukraine's command centers. Of course, we saw that post by the defense ministry earlier. The Russian defense ministry said that it had so far refrained from doing so. Uh, starting on February 24th, Russia systematically launched missiles against both Ukraine's civilian and military infrastructure. Again, uh, we saw in Kyiv multiple strikes over the past uh, the past you know month or two since this war began. There has been strikes in Kyiv on what they call military technical infrastructure. Um, and uh, so uh, now, I, again, this is going to be kind of a, a continuation of that. Let's get live UA map up here. All right, so that wraps up about uh, the last uh, 12 hours of stuff here in, uh, my, in the Situation Room. Uh, a lot of it was uh, just kind of absorbed by the reports of that Russian vessel uh, uh, the, the naval vessel today that definitely took uh, took the cake when it comes to um, uh, the reports flowing into the Situation Room uh, this evening. I'll say, okay, so now we're on our live UA map here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to scroll all the way down to about the 24-hour mark and we're we'll start going through about the 20, past 24 hours of uh, reports out of Ukraine here. All right, so starting here at about the 21-hour mark, I think we'll do. All right, so uh, 21 hours ago, presidents of Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia are heading to Kiev. Again, uh, we reported on that earlier, so this is when they were heading there earlier uh it was announced very quickly, uh, and then they were in the country, and before you know it, they're gone. Um, as is the case usually when there's these diplomatic uh, uh, these diplomatic missions in uh, Ukraine. Uh, overnight, uh, 21 hours ago again, overnight Russian army conducted missile strike uh, at a railway station in central Ukraine. Uh, routes of 17 trains changed due to the safety concerns there, uh, again located on the map there in center, central Ukraine. 20 hours ago, President of Estonia, uh, Estonia says uh, we are on our way to Kiev to the city that has suffered terribly due to Russian war since my last visit, together with presidents, uh, the, the presidents of those other Baltic states, of course. Uh, they're going to meet uh, clear friend, President, uh, the dear friend, President uh, Zelensky. Again, that uh, that meeting has happened uh, and is now past tense. 20 hours ago, images of a new encampment of troops, tents, and vehicles west of Soloti, Russia. Uh, troops, armored vehicles, and support equipment near uh, Dobrovka. Uh, and that is, again, in Russia. Those pictures were taken April 9th and are now just reported here on Live UA map. Uh, here are those pictures there to kind of the northeast of Ukraine across the border into Russia. 20 hours ago, images of convoys of Russian military vehicle trucks moving along uh, the T-2104 uh, uh, highway near uh, Vykolohuvka, uh, Ukraine, and the T-1313 highway near uh, uh, Bilokoranke, uh, Ukraine. Uh, again, uh, those uh, taken the 9th to 11th of April. Here are those images here, and there's the map location here. You can see those Maxar satellite images that uh, we've been taking. We've actually been looking at these same images over the past week now, uh, as they've been, uh, you know, bringing forces into the area in this in this region here, kind of north of Kharkiv. Uh, I would say north northeast of Kharkiv. Uh, 
in this entire area here is where they've been moving those forces into place. Also, in the area of Kharkiv as well. Uh, I believe a renewed offensive on Kharkiv is 100% going to happen uh, if they're going to conduct this pincer movement that I've been talking about in order to capture the Donbass. 20 hours ago, Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine says no evacuation today as Russian troops blocked evacuation buses in Zaporizhia region uh, and uh, constant attacks in Luhansk region. Again, you can see uh, those reports here on the map in that Zaporizhia Oblast there. This has been uh, pro this has been the area where all of those evacuation quarters have come under fire. Uh, for the most part, is this area. Uh, it, 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 they're trying to get people out of Mariupol, out of these towns here, move them westward. Uh, and the Russians are constantly opening fire on uh, evacuation quarters in this area here. Uh, Greenville asks a good question. He says, questions, what are the uh, chances Russia tries to take Kiev again? Uh, I would say at this time, it's kind of looking less likely, but it's always possible because of a few things. If they, so if they moved far enough east and they combined that, if they moved far enough east to the Dnieper, they might look at going up the Dnieper to Kiev. It's unlikely. However, uh, it is likely maybe if they if they moved far enough westward, if the Russians were taken, uh, able to take enough territory moving westward and then combine that with uh, strikes on Kiev, a bombardment of Kiev with either conventional weapons, uh, whatever they may be, uh, it would need to be a devastating attack on Kiev, though, uh, for them to take that city. They would basically need to destroy it. Uh, they would need to just uh, obliterate all of Kiev. Um, they wouldn't. I don't think a, their goal for them would to be even to save Kiev. It would be to wipe it off the face of the map, if anything. Twenty hours ago, Russia is jamming GPS uh, signals uh, in GPS satellite signals in Ukraine. U.S. Space Force says again we reported on that at the end of last night's reports. Uh, again, that's up by uh, where we see those forces moving into place. Toss 6 says uh, they will use a phobe if they get desperate because it's conventional. Yes, they could. Yes, they could use uh, uh, any type of ballistic missiles, cruise missiles. Uh, yes, yeah, something like a, a phobe, like a large conventional bomb. Uh, you know, the possibilities that they could go chemical or nuclear are always on the table as well, however less likely. Uh, and we pray that it stays that way, of course. Um, 19 hours ago, ambushed Russian convoy. At least two trucks and one uh, Tiger M has been destroyed uh, in eastern Ukraine. You can see that located on the map there. There's that report of that fight, that uh, that clash that broke out. 19 hours ago, uh, heavy clashes today in Skotovatka. Uh, uh, Skotovata, Sk Skotovata, again, uh, down here near Donetsk Oblast. You can see the report of that strike there. 18 hours ago, Russian troops used incendiary ammunition to shell uh, Nodovanalika Livka uh, village in the Zaporizhia region. Ukrainian fighter fighters extinguished the fires. Uh, it is still unclear at this time if that was maybe some of those phosphorus munitions or if it's some type of other incendiary munition uh, that was used there uh, to start those fires. Uh, again, we're still waiting to get some more information on that. 18 hours ago, uh, Sam uh, Pensier and S-300 filmed in Ivanka of Luhansk region. Again, there is a video here that I could show you of uh, that uh, of those uh, units there. You can see those missile those missile uh, units there moving through with the Russian Zs on them. All righty. Again, seeing those uh, missile systems moving through the area there. You can see that on the map. 18 hours ago, satellite imagery of Kherson Air Base shows buildup of Russian forces with dug-in positions. Some vehicles appear to be marked with Z symbol location. Again, they show the uh, coordinates on the map there. There's actually an image here you can see. Satellite imagery again of uh, that Kherson Air Base shows the buildup of those Russian forces dug in there. You can see they've definitely been doing a fair share of uh, uh, digging in. 18 hours ago, Arsenal with 125 millimeter ammunition found in Korokolivka village in the Kiev region. Again, uh, you can see images of that ammunition here. Again, that is stuff that uh, the Russians left behind in their hasty retreat from the Kiev region. 
18 hours ago, the Russian army shelling Kharkiv nonstop reports of MLRS hits in the Kharkiv region. This comes over the past few days, so we've seen an increase there in the amount of bombardment uh, in the area. Sixteen hours ago, over 50 shelling uh, in Kharkiv regions in the last 24 hours. Seven people killed, 22 wounded, two-year-old boy wounded a few days ago has succumbed in the hospital. Again, I reported on that on Monday uh, when that report first came out. That's very unfortunate. Uh, again, uh, it reiterates what I was just saying, that over the past few days to a week now, uh, the Russians have severely increased the amount of bombings and bombardment in, uh, in and around Kharkiv. Casey Greening says, any pics or videos of the ship being hit? Uh, no, but we did show that one picture that uh, purportedly showed uh, the ship uh, s with smoke in, uh, in through night vision. I showed that earlier. Um, 16 hours ago, the, uh, the exhumation of uh, bodies from the second mass grave began in Bucha. Uh, again, that comes as the amount of the, the casualties there. Uh, the, the list of casualties continues to grow, uh, not to mention the list of atrocities that are being reported there continues to grow as well. Heavy fire in Kharkiv after another shelling last night. Uh, again, 16 hours ago, this report came in. Uh, you can see the images from the morning after there. Uh, as those shells had landed in Kharkiv, in the Kharkiv region. Again, uh, reiterating just how hard the city has been hit. The entire region of Kharkiv has been hit over the past uh, few days. 16 hours ago, President of Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia arrived in Kiev. Again, we uh, talked about that earlier. In fact, there is a, a picture here. of them getting off of the uh, the train there uh, with an armed, uh, a very heavily armed um, security force there. Sixteen hours ago, or sorry, 15 hours ago, Russian troops uh, shelled uh, the Cherkasky uh, in Donetsk region, about seven wounded. Uh, that was located here on the map. Fifteen hours ago, Twitter has suspended Russians with Attitude, a prolific pro-Kremlin account with 130,000 followers, which was very active in the information war regarding the conflict in Ukraine. It had just over 10,000 followers a day prior to the war. Uh, this comes as a lot of pro-Russian pro -Russian media sources have uh, you know, been suspended on places like Twitter, uh, YouTube, Twitch, uh, and many other platforms. So this isn't the first time that we have seen this. Fifteen hours ago, the BBC in a statement saying, we are aware of a fake video with BBC News branding suggesting Ukraine was responsible for last week's missile attack on Kramatorsk train station. The BBC is taking action to have the video removed. We urge people not to share it and to check stories on the BBC News website. And this comes as we've seen an increase in the amount of fake news stories going around. And I'm not just talking false information. I'm talking actually constructed fake news story. News stories. F Fourteen hours ago, Ukrainian mobile air defense units shot down two airplanes over the Kharkiv region today. Um, again, uh, you can see that on the map uh, located here. Uh, Fourteen hours ago, Russia claims border checkpoint was shelled in the Kursk region. Again, uh, that is along the, uh, uh, the Ukrainian-Russian border. And that comes as uh, Russia has been increasing their threat levels in these regions as well. Uh, 14 hours ago, the French investigators in Bucha. Here's a picture of those investigations there. You can see the French badge there. Uh, he's fully kitted up and uh, armed as well, uh, which I find interesting for an in investigation uh, team to be that heavily armed. Um, however, you, again, you never know. It is wartime uh, when, uh, when an attack could take place uh, in and around uh, those areas. Uh, again, you can see... Um, Scratching his nose there, the uh, French investigator in, in Bucha. Uh, very heavily kitted. I'm actually pretty impressed to see uh, this loadout here that they have uh, going on here. Very interesting, very interesting. 
14 hours ago, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's presidential advisor denies Zelensky rejected a visit from German President Steinmer, as reported uh, by BLD newspaper. This again was in a CNN interview from earlier. 13 hours ago, an OSCE expert report, again, which I reported on last night, has now found clear patterns of violations of international humanitarian law by Russian forces in Ukraine and detailed numerous incidents that it says could constitute war crimes. This comes as it's like the, I'm pretty sure it's the first official investigation by an independent uh, third-party watchdog, uh, you know, a foreign watchdog, uh, independent, so again, uh, we're going to have to wait and see uh, what comes of this and if this has any implications moving forward. Lupus Warrior says, checking in from Seattle. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today uh, to the stream. Glad to have you on board. Again, uh, thank you to everybody uh, that is tuning in uh, today. Um, S. Schultz actually says, notice no FAMAS. Yes, uh, I, the, the uh, was it like an AK, like some kind of AK loadout? I mean, it looked like some kind of uh, modern AK platform that he was wielding there. I wasn't able to uh, identify the exact, uh, the exact model. Uh, but it looks like one of the newer AK platforms, if I'm not mistaken. 13 hours ago, uh, Gitanas uh, Nuzeda uh, uh, visited the Borodianka today, again, in one of these other harder-hit uh, regions or harder-hit places uh, outside of Kiev. Uh, this is where the dark side of humankind has shown its face. Brutal war crimes committed by the Russian army will not stay unpunished. War criminals must be prosecuted internationally. Pocket Frog says, Nemico, are you trolling us with Lost Night? I don't. I say last night. Last. Last night. Not Lost Night. Or did I say Lost Night? Have I been saying Lost Night? Do I do I say it un... un uh, do I say Lost Night uh, subconsciously? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, Bonsai said maybe an AK-12. Maybe. Possibly. Twelve hours ago, President of Poland, uh, Duda, in Ukraine, our goal is to support President Zelensky uh, and uh, Ukraine defenders in a decisive moment for this country. Okay, you can see that report there. And again, there was a another picture, actually. Um, get that source up here. You can see that there. Again, also heavily kitted. I believe he, this uh, this soldier here is wielding a uh, an AR platform rifle, I believe. Very interesting. Uh, Andy says, before the report started, C2 was very active. Yeah, we, uh, we have been keeping an eye on C2. Uh, we've been keeping an eye on those cameras there, and we'll be flipping back to them here shortly. I'm almost done with these live UA map updates. 12 hours ago, President... Uh, uh, actually, no, we saw that one. Uh, 12 hours ago, real-time network data shows a collapse of connectivity in Cherkasy, all blast Ukraine, uh, due to the loss of service on uh, Miklaut, the region's largest internet provider. And the operator reports a DDoS attack on its infrastructure. Again, you can see that report there in central Ukraine. This is not the first attack on internet service provider infrastructure in Ukraine. Uh, we're still waiting to get, again, more information on uh, those continuing cyber attacks in that region. 12 hours ago, President Zelensky, without additional weaponry, this war will become an endless bloodbath, spreading misery, suffering, and destruction. Mariupol, Bucha, Kremitorsk, and the list will continue, will be continued. Nobody will stop uh, Russia except Ukraine with heavy weapons. Again, here is a, um, uh, here's that video here by Zelensky, and uh, you can see his uh, translation there. our country and destroying our he's actually speaking in english which i admire uh we'll go ahead and we'll listen to this real quick russia launched a full-scale war against ukraine on february 24th now it's april russia counted on capturing ukraine within five days that was the deadline they established for obliterating our country and destroying our democracy but they had no idea who they were up against Russia didn't know how much we cherished our freedom. We've been defending ourselves against Russia much longer than they invaders planned. We have destroyed more Russian weapons and military equipment than some armies in Europe currently possess. But this is not enough. 
Russia still had the capacity to attack and not only against Ukraine. Poland, Moldova, Romania and the Baltic states will become the next targets if the freedom of Ukraine falls. The images of Bucha and Mariupol have demonstrated real Russian intentions to the whole world. It could only be stopped by force of arms. It must be done now. Ukraine needs weapon supplies. We need heavy artillery, armed vehicles, air defense systems and combat aircraft. Anything to repel Russian forces and stop their war crimes. Artillery 155 millimeters, artillery shells 152 millimeters, as many as possible. Multiple launch rocket systems, Grad, Smersh, Tornado or M142 HIMARS. Armored vehicles, APC, infantry, fighting vehicles, others, tanks, T-72 or similar tanks from the USA or Germany, air defense systems, S-300, BOOG or Western equivalents, military aircraft must have to deblock our cities and save millions of Ukrainians as well as millions of Europeans. Freedom must be armed better than tyranny. Western countries have everything to make it happen. The final victory over the tyranny and the number of people saved depends on them. Arm Ukraine now to defend freedom. Wow, that was actually a, a very moving. Uh, Russia launch. That was a very moving uh, statement there by Zelensky. Um, I really admire how he broke down all of the equipment that he needs in the video. Uh, that was pretty cool. I like that. Um, and I respect the fact that he did the whole video in English to directly address the West. Um, yeah, definitely some very, uh, very moving statements there, some very moving footage there showed by President Zelensky. 11 hours ago, presidents of Ukraine, Poland, and Lithuania, and Estonia met in Kiev again. Uh, we saw those reports earlier. There's a picture here I can show you of, of the meeting, I think. Uh, yeah, here's the meeting here. That was the, that was the picture I've been waiting for there. There we go. There's that picture of that meeting there um, from all those Baltic state leaders. Ten hours ago, Gutierrez, three, six countries depend on Russia and Ukraine to import wheat. Uh, again, these reports coming as, you know, the, the food crisis, uh, the possibility that this food supply chain is going to be heavily affected by this war, especially when it comes to wheat. Uh, the the exports of wheat from both Ukraine uh, and Russia are, uh, are very important for uh, global food security. And so that is definitely going to be an issue going forward. Ten hours ago, Ukrainian military destroyed Russian military convoy with MLRS using Bioraktar TB2 uh, for correction of fire. Um, again, uh, there's a video here of that. Those Bioraktars have been extremely uh, useful in this conflict since the beginning here. See that footage there of those strikes uh, being taken out there. So they were using the Bayraktar for correction of fire uh, to give guidance, I, I believe, there. So what that means uh, to those MLRS systems. Lordy says, "I wish he would get what he's asking for. He's already he's 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 ready to kick ass. Most presidents uh, would be hiding on the ground. Yes, I totally agree. I believe we should. Yeah, I agree with that 100% wholeheartedly. Um, I feel like a, a few uh, a few countries are slacking in that department. Nine hours ago, a senior defense official says time is of the essence on U.S. and European weapons deliveries to Ukraine. U.S. has been getting weapons to the battlefield in Ukraine within 48 hours. The official said. Again, uh, just reiterating what I said there a moment ago." And nine hours ago, Defense Minister France will send additional military aid to Ukraine. Again, I'm tacking on to, to that statement there. More aid heading into Ukraine. Uh, nine hours ago, UN Secretary General Antino Gutierrez said on Wednesday a humanitarian ceasefire in Ukraine does not seem to be possible at the moment. Again, uh, reiterating on those previous statements that, uh, that the, uh, especially in Mariupol in that area, uh, it is too, uh, is too tense at this time for them to get those evacuation corridors opened. Selena says, can we get Arm Ukraine Now trending? Yes, I'm not sure if that is already trending or not, but it should be. Uh, and we should, yeah. Uh, we should make that a thing. Make that a hashtag, Arm Ukraine. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I mean, especially for the second phase of the war that are going into in the east, it's very, it's going to be very important uh, that they get some heavier weaponry again because I, I multi- I've talked about this multiple times. Uh, for what they for, to hold back the Russian offensive, just like a grinding assault from the east westward all the way to the Dnipro, they're going to need quite a bit of different uh, assets than they have currently. Um, again, more of those uh, uh, air defense systems. Uh, they need the. Uh, they need the drones, they need the uh, anti-tank systems, uh, the switchblades, etc. They need all of those things to be able to make a successful defense happen in the east of Ukraine. Nine hours ago, Russian Defense Ministry threatens to attack decision-making headquarters in Kiev in case of uh, in case of Ukraine will continue to hit targets inside of Russia. Again, um, uh, again, a report on that earlier. We're still waiting to see what those strikes may be and how they will be carried out. Again, it's expected to be on things like the presidential palace, a lot of the governmental infrastructure in Kiev, uh, including some of those that build those buildings and infrastructure there. Uh, in the city, and uh, is the reason I think why we haven't seen, I mean, I'm surprised we didn't see a lot of those buildings get struck struck earlier on. Um, it's mainly because of the robust air defense uh, that, that Ukraine has managed to mount in uh, in Kiev. So it remains to be seen if the Russians are even going to be able to break through that air defense to be able to strike some of these targets. Um, Okay, so nine hours ago, the Russian Ministry of Defense has claimed full control over the port in Mariupol. Again, uh, the Pentagon came out with some conflicting reports. Um, The Pentagon stating earlier that it is still under contest at this time, uh, that Mariupol still has not fallen. In fact, just the most recent information I've gotten over the past few hours kind of uh, looks to looks to uh, shed some light on that. Uh, There is still reports of conflict happening in and around the city uh, at this hour. There's still Ukrainian troops in the area. Again, we're still waiting to get confirmation on the surrender of that 1,000 uh, Ukrainian Marines. However, we still have not uh, heard concrete information on that at this time. Nine hours ago, French Minister of the Armed Forces uh, states, in exchange with my Ukrainian colleague, I uh, congratulated him on the, uh, that's uh, Oleg uh, Seryzhnikov, uh, I congratulated him on the courage and determination of Ukrainians to defend their country. The success recorded in the north of the country show that this effort is paying off, uh, referring to Kiev, of course. Um, France has been alongside the Ukrainian people from the start. We have delivered more than $100 million worth of military equipment. Nine hours ago, the White House says uh, President of the United States Biden called Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, to update him on the ongoing U.S. support for Ukraine. They spoke from 11.41 to 12.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That was uh, earlier this today, uh, nine hours ago, that those talks occurred. Nine hours ago, the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, uh, Karim Khan, visits mass graves in Bucha, says Ukraine is a crime scene. Uh, I I believe there's no doubt about that. Again, there's a picture uh, of that visit there. Um, You can see that chief prosecutor there inspecting some of the destroyed vehicles there um, uh, in Bucha. Uh, eight hours ago, uh, again, this look. This is a uh, location unknown event here. Uh, Ukrainian military used 152 millimeter self-propelled artillery, uh, DN Dana, for the first time. I'm not exactly sure what that acronym stands for, uh, but you can see that is up by Kharkiv here. Again, that report came in eight hours ago. Uh, we're we can go ahead here and uh, take a look at that. <laughs> Turned on that music there. You can see the, uh, the this is the images of that uh, that artillery being used there. That uh, 152 millimeter self-propelled artillery there. I believe D A Dana is the uh, is the acronym for the um, for that artillery type, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Okay, so moving on. Uh, eight hours ago, the U.S. says to provide more intelligence to Ukraine, says officials. Uh, this this will come from things like those RC-135 reconnaissance aircraft that uh, we have been monitoring, things like those Forte drones. Uh, a lot of the reconnaissance and surveillance aircraft are, play an intricate role in providing that intelligence to the Ukrainians. Um, I believe that they're going to increase the amount of that intelligence uh, to the Ukrainians. It's possible we're going to see uh, U.S. reconnaissance aircraft operating maybe a little closer to the eastern portion of Ukraine again. Um, you know, still with well within range away from the uh, 
well, uh, with, out of the range of Russian forces, of course, but it is possible we might see them shift a little closer uh, to that conflict area. Eight hours ago, the Czech flag has flown again in Kiev. Uh, the Czech diplomats are back. This is one of the many steps we support Ukraine, said the Trusin Palace. Eight hours ago, commanders of the Azov Regiment and 36th Marine Brigade confirm operation to break through encirclement by 36th Brigade and joining Azov, uh, confirming part of soldiers surrendered. Again, that's in Mariupol here. Um, there's actually three areas in Mariupol that are currently being contested over. You have the center, the center area, the central area of Mariupol. You have these Russian forces trying to cut off the, the Ukrainians that are in this area. You also have kind of a pocket of Ukrainian forces here that are, that are trying to be cut off by the Russians, as well as over here, the Russians are trying to cut them off as well. There's about three different pockets uh, of Ukrainian forces uh, in this scattered throughout this area of, of Mariupol here uh, that are still providing resistance. Eight hours ago, Biden authorizes an additional $800 million in security assistance to Ukraine. Again, I reported on this earlier. After speaking to Zelensky for nearly an hour this morning per the White House, uh, eight hours ago, President, uh, President Biden again uh, announces the $800 million more in the U.S. military aid uh, to Ukraine. After a call with Zelensky, the U.S. will provide artillery systems, armored personnel carriers, additional helicopters to Ukraine. The Pentagon hasn't given these systems to Ukraine before. So this is actually this is a big deal that they are uh, committing to uh, providing this equipment to to Ukraine. Polish president uh, in Kyiv, sanctions should be excluding. Uh, there is no place in the international community for those who did this in Bucha, Irpin, etc. Russia cannot be accepted and its authorities cannot be accepted. Uh, there is no dialogue with those who break all of the rules. Uh, another uh, post eight hours ago from uh, President Duda there, Polish President Duda in Kiev after visiting Bordyanka and Erpen. I said to President Zelensky and to our ministers and advisories, advisors that this is not a war, it is terrorism. Uh, again, pretty stark words there from those presidents in the, of the Baltic uh, states there. Eight hours ago, the White House uh, arming Ukraine was a divisive factor in its ability to confront Russia. Of course, we've covered this a few times now, how, how important that has been for the Ukrainians to have that support and that training. Seven hours ago, Mayor of Kiev asked citizens not to return to the city so far as risks of deterioration of situation are still high. So that, I just want to clarify that with you, that there is still possibility that the, that the situation in Kiev, in the city, the capital city, could deteriorate. Uh, they are asking people, again, you know, if you have left, if you, just to hold out for a while before you return. Uh, Seven hours ago, the Ukrainians asked for this. Uh, we have it and are going to provide it, says Pentagon Press Secretary, uh, about the protective equipment that they're looking to send some of that defensive aid. Seven hours ago, artillery rounds headed to Ukraine, identified by Kyiv as critical need per Pentagon Press Secretary. Uh, if they need additional artillery rounds, clearly the United States will do what it can to fill those needs. Seven hours ago, the Russian military kidnapped uh, the member of the uh, Skadovoysk Regional Council, Vladimir Kuryakov. Uh, you can see an image of him there. Seven hours ago, three people were killed and four were injured in a shelling uh, of the Nemosilhani district of Kharkiv by Russian troops on Wednesday. Again, you can see that shelling reported on the map there. Six hours ago, Ukrainian military launched two anti-ship missiles at uh, Missile Neptune at Russian Navy uh, Project 1164 Atlantic Cruiser Muscova near uh, Zimny Island, reportedly setting her on fire, causing damage, head of Odessa Regional Administration. Those were the breaking reports we had on uh, on that ship being hit. Let's see if there's an image with that. I'm not sure if there was or not. But, yeah, so here's the image of the ship, not struck, but uh, there's the image of that ship there. Six hours ago, our objective is to do exactly that, replies Press Secretary, when asked if U.S. diplomats will return to Ukraine. Again, uh, uh, reiterating on those previous reports tonight that I made of those U.S. diplomats looking to send a delegation to Ukraine in the coming weeks. Six hours ago, 1,567 people managed to evacuate to safe areas from Zaporizhia, Luhansk regions, and Mariupol, despite lack of official corridors today. Uh, so people are still getting through, even though there aren't official evacuation corridors open in those areas at this time. People are still trying to get out, um, and they're still trying to make their way uh, out of those areas there. Uh, six hours ago, another sorry, Russian Ortolan 10 drone was shot down by the 28th Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Army. You can see pictures of that, uh, that hardware here and uh, positioning on the map there uh, near the Kherson region. 
And then here, five hours ago at the Kherson Airport, this was fresh news uh, in this evening of those explosions and detonations there in uh, Kherson at that airport. We're still waiting to get more information on that at this time. I'll go ahead and refresh our live UAE map to see if we've had any fresh uh, updates here. We actually did have a Kharkiv Oblast red alert uh, threat siren sound about six hours ago here and, and, and down here as well to the south. Uh, those are two new fresh air raid. Actually, wait, hold up, hold up. Uh, if we zoom up here, we have a lot. We have our, our, nightly, our nightly round of red alert aerial threat siren uh, coming in here. Kharkiv, there's two for Kharkiv. Uh, Zaporizhia, or sorry, that's Zaporizhika uh, Oblast. Kharivki, Ri, Dnipro, Dnipro Oblast, uh, all red alerts. Kharkiv, uh, another red alert. Uh, Poltava, red alert. Kramatorsk, red alert. Sumanska, red alert. And Bakhmut, red alert as well. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to really quickly check our, let's check our situation cam room here. Looks like uh, it's starting to get a little bit brighter uh, out in Ukraine. We can see on our cam too there, starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit of daylight poking through the clouds as we reach dawn here, 5:34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sirens going off now in Kharkiv. People are saying as well. I'm trying to refresh this ski cam. One second here, guys. Okay, I think I got it up. There we go. So the ski cam is back up. Definitely get looking brighter in Kharkiv. Uh, we might need to refresh some of our other cams here. Uh, where is that one, actually? There we go. Uh, yeah, so Odessa is a little bit to the uh, west. So as the, as the sun travels further west, we'll see... Uh, we'll see it get brighter and brighter. As you can see, it's getting a little bit brighter in Dnipro. It's bright in Kharkiv. However, Cam 3 needs to be refreshed. So we're just going to go ahead and refresh all of them. Uh, here's our, our Cam out of uh, Kramatorsk. Kramatorsk here. Move that into frame there for you. So we got that view out of Kramatorsk. And we have our view out of Odessa here. Get that up on screen. Still not fully light out in Odessa yet. Uh, here's our our coke plant feed. We'll get that up. We got that car the coke plant feed up. Here's our Markivka uh, scene there, uh, and I think I think that's all of them. We got them all updated. Oh, except the. Here's that, that river cam here. Uh, the Sudi River out of Kharkiv. Uh, as well as our other Odessa cam here. We'll get this up on screen as well. Thank you, Drew, for those uh, kind words. Uh, again, thank you to everybody that's tuning in this evening for this report. I'm just getting some of the cameras refreshed here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we'll move this one over a bit. We can put that right behind my head there. Perfect. All righty, moving on. So we went through all of our reports on Live UA, uh, on Live UA map, um, including this was our last one, these air raid sirens that we had here. Um, so I think uh, moving on from that, moving on from that, I think what we're going to do is just take a quick look through our open source maps. Uh, and see if we can gain any insight. So what, what I'm going to do for that is I'll move back down to our pointer screen here. Todd six, yep, that's actually uh, that's that's actually what we're. I was talking about that earlier. We're actually looking at uh, uh, we're redoing a bunch of the systems here for the stream, for, uh, making those cams more redundant. Uh, yeah, and I do agree. Things can always be better. As I said earlier, it's kind of an evolving, a constantly evolving organism. Uh, the camera setup. 
Shameless Senpai says, glad to be back. Been following you since onset. Just really quiet about it. Well, Shameless Senpai, there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Glad to have you here. Okay, so I think what we'll do first uh, is we'll look at, so here's, um, again, here's our, here's Mariupol. This is a situation in Mariupol. All right, uh, these are all of the reports here uh, in Mariupol um, that you're seeing. Uh, some are new, some are older. Uh, but this is everything that has been reported here in Mariupol over the past, like, about a month or so. You can see just just a, a absolutely destroyed. The entire city uh, has been destroyed. Okay, um, let's, if we scroll up here, uh, we're going to scroll up to... Actually, it's down. I think it's down. Yeah, here we go. So... These are some of the newer reports, I believe, actually. Hold on, where is it? Go ahead and give that map a refresh. Robert B says, any word on Chernobyl? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. Um, they, of course, the Russians have pulled out of Chernobyl. The plan has been retaken. I actually did an in-depth on that in last night's report. That's available on the YouTube channel. If you want to go watch uh, last night's report for the 12th, uh, I, I actually went pretty in-depth into everything that kind of has gone down in Chernobyl. But you can see here on uh, our Map Hub map, just the, just the insane level of reports and uh, information here, especially coming out of Kharkiv and Mariupol. Uh, these are all reports of, of, of bombings, of, of strikes that have happened uh, in the past month or so here since this uh, conflict has began. We'll check our flight radars tonight, actually, because I know quite a few people were asking about uh, the situation with our flight radars, so we'll do that here quick. Uh, somebody said it looked like an explosion on the Dnipro cam right as I switched off. Um, let's switch back over really quick, and I'll see if I can get that. Uh... Interesting. We'll keep an eye on. We'll keep an eye on that cam. We're going to switch back to that here in short, shortly. I just want to really quickly go through all of our. Uh... I put all of our. Um, uh... We're going to get all of our open source maps here taken care of, and then uh, we'll switch back over to those cam feeds, and I'm going to switch over to kind of a Q&A with you guys. Um, so top flights today, not too, too much going on. Um, our top trike, our, sorry, our top tracked flights, not a lot of military activity at this hour. Uh, and if there is, it is currently off radar, off transponder. So again, Ukraine airspace looking completely dead. Uh, no commercial flights really heading over the region. Poland is also looking especially dead today, and uh, as well as Belarus. Not very much, uh, not, uh, no commercial flights out of Belarus today. Uh, Black Sea, of course, you can see all of those flights uh, uh, avoiding um, the Black Sea there with a nine and a half foot pole, as they have been since this conflict has began. Looking back over to our marine traffic, you can see uh, there is still quite a bit of marine traffic occurring uh, from the. Um, Again, from the eastern side of the Black Sea here downwards. But you, if you look here, the Sea of Azov is pretty much empty. Uh, we can also see uh, a pretty it's pretty empty in this portion of the Black Sea here around Odessa, uh, minus a few vessels uh, and a few pings here. Yes, yeah, so a few, a little bit of, but not too much in the way of traffic. I'm not seeing uh, really any traffic down here by Sevastopol. Uh, and uh, in Crimea, you can see some traffic there. But yeah, we've definitely seen kind of a shifting in naval uh, traffic in and around the Black Sea um, over the past uh, month or so here as they've, you know, cleared out of the, the Sea of Azov and cleared out of this area here uh, in the south of Ukraine. And now you see kind of them all uh, kind of following the same line that air traffic f follows here. Um, wait for it to load. You can see all the air traffic in the south. You can see all the marine traffic in the south. Okay, they're all kind of avoiding the north here of the Black Sea as much as they can. So we've had quite a few strikes on Kharkiv. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if uh, if we have any active air monitoring uh, stations in and around uh, Kharkiv still, and if we can see some spikes maybe located on those from this evening. Yeah, staying far away from the northern Black Sea there, as Drew says. Go ahead and... Uh, 
Uh, control plus scroll. There we go. So you can see actually here a little bit of a spike in the center of Kharkiv here, updated two minutes ago, April 13th, 2022. And so this has been a, val a val very valuable resource here. Um, and you can see there, it, it is, uh, it could be, could be a factory possibly uh, pumping out. There could be a fire burning there in Kharkiv. Um, but yeah, we do definitely see some elevated levels here and here. Um, moderate. Um, it looks like it has gone up over the past uh, a little short while here. Again, we'll keep an eye on that. But this this resource here of the uh, of the air pollution maps has been uh, a, a wonderful resource when it comes to tracking uh, and kind of uh, trying to co you know uh, correlate the data between you know these reports that we hear about explosions going off and then seeing. Uh, you know, seeing the data reflected in these uh, these air pollution uh, these air pollution monitoring sites here. So very interesting information. Here's another ship radar. Um, tracks a little bit of different uh, with a different scope here. You, again, you can see no vessels in the Sea of Azov, Northern Black Sea, totally uh, totally devoid of, of ships at this time. Uh, besides naval hardware, uh, that's the main exception is naval hardware. Good Soup says we need more troops in Ukraine. Yeah, I would agree that they definitely need all the help that they can get. Uh, that is for sure. Go ahead and refresh uh, the live UA map here. Yeah, so we've got all of these air raids that have come in here over the past uh, about hour or so across Ukraine. This is the pattern we see every night, uh, except tonight uh, not a lot going on in the west of Ukraine. As you can see, almost no reports in the west of Ukraine. Uh, the east of Ukraine has Definitely heated up, though, uh, as you can see, all of these reports coming in from about the past 24 hours here uh, or so. So with that, I think we're going to switch back over to our Situation Room. And I'm going to kind of go into, uh, into the live chats now and start kind of uh, answering questions and, and reading comments and stuff like that. So Frasia actually sent over a, a, a tweet uh, uh, by Ukraine War Report. Sent the other two Slava class guided missile cruisers, uh, Marshal Ustinov and uh, the Veryag, uh, are not in the Black Sea and won't be able to cross into this into since the straits are closed for warships. Russia thus loses significant naval firepower for their southern Ukraine campaign. So yeah, it is looking like their naval uh, their naval forces are significantly reduced now uh, in uh, in the uh, uh, this, the Black Sea there uh, along the southern coast of Ukraine, and that might make their efforts uh, for a uh, amphibious assault on Odessa uh, considerably harder. Jake Miller says, Nemico, how was your day? It's been pretty good, uh, pretty busy. Uh, again, I... Uh, Spent most of my day uh, getting caught up on some work here, and I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be up all night actually, doing some uh, work to the stream, uh, and and preparing for tomorrow's uh, report. Uh, e either tomorrow's report or the next day's report is going to be is going to come with some upgrades and some new features, and uh, we're going to be trying some new things. Uh, and so I'm kind of preparing for that again. We're kind of constantly evolving this the uh, the format here. Andy, thank you for tuning in uh, this evening. Glad to see you. Lucas uh, Gustafsson says, has the Russian warship been sunk or just hit? Uh, it, it has been sunk. Yes, it has been sunk. We're still waiting to get um, uh, more concrete information on that. We'll have it for you by tomorrow, most likely. Good Soup says, a uh, uh, fat shout out to uh, 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 to Nemico. Good, good work, Nemico. Thank you, Good Soup, um, for tuning in this evening. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Mimi says there was a particularly big fire in the industrial uh, district of Kharkiv yesterday. Firefighters have done all well under the circumstances. Yeah, that could also, I mean, residual smoke, uh, you know, residual burning fires and stuff could be result for a lot of those uh, increases in the particular map that we were seeing a minute ago. The particulate map we were seeing.
Poseidon says that uh, my parents enjoy the live updates. They have expressed that your updates are thorough and unbiased. Cheers. Well, I do everything I can to, uh, you know, to provide kind of an unbiased and thorough reporting format here. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, in the future, I'm going to continue to make steps to improve that, uh, to be even more thorough and even more unbiased. Uh, and again, I'm still kind of, we're still trying to pin down kind of like, you know, the exact format and how I, you know, bring these reports to you guys. And we're just kind of experimenting and trying some different things. And uh, at the same time, bringing you guys some much valuable information. Selena says, did everyone overestimate the Russian military? In some way, in some ways they did. Yes, in some ways, even our own U.S. intelligence analysts uh, uh, overestimated um, uh, the Russian military. However, at the same time, it's important that we don't underestimate the Russian military. They were stretched pretty thin across multiple fronts there in Ukraine. And also, I mean, using the conscript forces, the reservist forces, the, uh, again, as many, as many forces as they can besides Russian, you know, Russian soldiers, uh, they, they did. So we're talking, you know, all of the people that were called up to arms in Crimea, all the people that were called up in the Donbass to fight for Russia, um, you know, the Chechnyans, uh, anybody from Belarus, you know, some, there's some soldiers from Belarus that have gone in, not in official capacity, of course, but there's, uh, you know, militia fighters. There's all sorts of, of uh, you know, private military entities. And uh, again, you know, they tried to put every card into play that they could except their own boots in some cases. They still have, at least on paper, a pretty significant force uh, to be reckoned with. And I think it's very important that we don't underestimate Russia. But at the same time, I agree 100 percent. Yeah, a lot of people overestimated their initial abilities to assault Kiev. Uh, I think Russia underestimated uh, uh, Ukrainians' ability uh, to defend. Mainly, they underestimated the training they had received from the U.S. They underestimated the effect that some of those weapon systems that the U.S. had provided them uh, would have. So we said, what happened to Cam 2? Cam 2 is Dnipro. Uh, we're currently uh, watching Dnipro uh, on Cam 2 there. Christopher Ryan, too old. Thank you for the question, though. Much appreciated. Thank you for tuning in. Jay asks, what's been going on in Dnipro, I think the name is? Well, we've had some strikes in Dnipro. We've had some air raids in Dnipro the past few days. Um, again, uh, I'm swapping out some cameras here on screen, guys, so stand by for that. Um, earlier, there were some reports that we had... Uh, some strikes on uh, on the the Dnipro cam, uh, but so far we haven't really seen uh, uh, too much in the way of that. Uh, Uh, not sure who that was that, uh, me, me hug something, me hug, my, me hug myself. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much uh, for that. Much appreciated. Jake Miller says, that's good. I've been busy since we had multiple tornado warnings tonight in Indiana. So I've been busy with that. Oof. Well, I hope you're staying safe there, Jake Miller. Thank you for tuning in. Drew Box says, love to see how much this network has evolved. So thankful for this excellent news slash intel sources since day one. Again, thank you, Nemeco Network, everyone in the Discord and mods. Thank you. Thank you so much, Drew, for tuning in. And uh, that means a ton. It really does. It's because of you guys that this happens and that this is possible, especially to all my mods and to everybody over in the Discord that is uh, doing an amazing job at uh, keeping the information flowing. You guys are, you guys are great. Yeah, that uh, I'm pretty sure those are smokestacks in Dnipro, and then that angle there is uh, is that's that's the Lviv hotel cam. 
Uh, Rob D360, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, he says, thank you for the updates, Nemico. Thank you for tuning in, Rob. Much appreciated. Uh, Bloxville says, after Ukraine wins this war, people are going to want to uh, going to be wanting to be trained by Ukrainian troops. Without a doubt, uh, they have, uh, especially when it comes to anti-tank warfare, uh, they've been absolutely killing it. Yeah, they've been doing an absolutely stellar job. All righty. So I'm going to move our Odessa shot up here. And uh, I'm going to keep our... Uh, we'll keep our um, uh, our Ukraine... Or sorry, our Dnipro cam. Uh, we're going to keep that uh, down here. And then uh, I'm going to move this up here, just like that. Move that down there. So at least we can keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on that there. Ali uh, Mancy says, have the Russians started using more modern vehicles yet, or are they still using Cold War stuff uh, like they did at the start? Uh, a little bit, yes. There has been, uh, they have started to use some of their more modern equipment in some areas. Uh, I believe they are keeping a lot of that on the back burner uh, for the most part, though, for, the, for now. Uh, they do have a lot of equipment. They have an excess. Drew Beck says, I need to get back in the Discord and start clipping these videos for those. Yeah, we'd love that. Uh, in fact, we're taking on editors all the time. If you'd like to help out in the editing department, uh, you can always PM us a message and we can, uh, we can get the ball rolling on that. Mother Saki said, did you see the report on Saturday or Sunday about the train tracks in Belgrade being blown up? I've got info. If not, I, I believe I did hear about that report. Yes, uh, we didn't uh, actually, um, I don't think we reported on that in our Monday report or not. But yes, we did have information on that. Yeah, it's not the first strike on rail line infrastructure that we've seen, actually. Pocket Frog says, uh, Nemico, only thing missing is a frog in your pocket. Besides that, great job. Well, thank you so much, Pocket Frog, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, so that fire, Jay, is actually a smokestack. Uh, that's the Dnipro. Uh, there's a factory there, and there's a smokestack that is uh, um, that is releasing that fire. At least at this time, that's uh, that's what we, we believe it to be. Um, uh, there was some activity earlier in the evening on that Dnipro cam, though. Carol asked a really good question. She says, if Russia does use chemical weapons, what would change in terms of other countries stepping in? Well, it's that's that remains to be seen. Um, it, you might see increases in sanctions and aid sent in. Uh, I don't think you'd see any involvement immediately. It depends on how bad the chemical weapons attack is. Uh, we've kind of seen them dip the toes in the water with this Mariupol situation over the past few days. Raindrop, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, 
Thomas Ban Queen says, pretty sure without reinforcements of troops on the ground, the Ukraine will eventually lose this war. Well, see, and Zelensky has stated this. If he doesn't get the equipment he needs, if he doesn't get the support he needs, yes, this war will drag on. His words were it will turn into a bloody mess. Uh, and so, yeah, that is very, po uh, very possible that, they, you know, they need not only more troops on the ground, but they need, uh, they need more weapons. They need more supplies. Uh, Lotus cases I've read somewhere that they they go under rubber mats so that RU thermal imaging could not detect them. Uh, they do their hits and go home. Uh, yeah, that actually, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put that past them. Uh, even a thermal blanket, uh, like a thermal, um, uh, you know, like one of those thermal emergency blankets, those work uh, to thwart thermal imaging pretty well, actually. Uh, and even something as simple as that could be used to thwart uh, thermal imaging uh, on, a, on a large open terrain. Um, uh, if you're speaking like to those man pad units and stuff, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, they do use uh, equipment like that. Uh, stream elements, uh, or sorry, uh, 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 M C H Uggen. I, I I don't know what you. I I can't pronounce the names. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, welcome aboard, man. Oh, Drew is Space Andy. That's right. That's right. Well, welcome uh, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'd love to have you over there on the Discord. Marcia asks, have you heard from Mehmet? Yeah, he messaged me earlier today. He's currently in the midst of a cat evacuation operation. Uh, HM Producer actually will have some more information on that for you guys. I believe she's talked to him uh, more closely. Uh... Cam 1, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll refresh Cam 1 here. Also get that one uh, updated as well. There we go. Hugo saying news showing videos of possible cluster, cluster munitions being used uh, by Russians on uh, forces on civilians. Yeah, we have actually seen uh, we have seen video footage of that as well. HM Producer, thank you so much for those uh, chat questions there. Greenville Hauser asks, uh, uh, what are the chances Russia tries to take Kiev again? Uh, I've said, it, you know, it's possible, however unlikely. Um, they, would, they have a lot of objectives they need to take care of before that. CalCal27 says, is there any way possible to get into Mariupol? I mean, it's a very large terrain, so yeah, you could get into the city if you wanted to. However, uh, it's, it's really about getting out uh, of the city. Marcia asks, is the second ship or the same one, uh, or if you're speaking about the one that got blown up tonight? Uh, I believe that's the first. Uh, I mean, I, I believe there are multiple Russian ships that have been uh, blown up. However, that's the first this evening, uh, if, if that's what you're speaking of. Wayne Aaron says, I look like a mix of Wolf Blitzer and Anderson Cooper. Well, roger that, man. Yeah, actually, uh, we we don't actually have an official rule list for the live chats yet. Uh, we will soon. I'm I'm actually gonna uh, uh, post up like a, an official rule list. Uh, we have a rule list for like the Discord live chats and stuff, and we're gonna make that same rule list uh, over here on the live chats as well. Uh, you know, as we try to keep uh, things civil in the live chats here. 
uh, there's a, you know a couple things that we like to keep out of uh, keep out of the live chats, uh, just to keep things neutral. Okay, we're trying to keep things neutral. All right, so uh, we, you know we don't really care what it is most of the time, but if it's uh, if it's causing things to get uncivil in the chats, then of course you know it needs to something needs to be dealt with. Wolf Cooper says flap and jack. Yeah. Doom Pie with the weather forecast in Keene at 7 o'clock, 4 degrees C, clear sky, wind northwest, 12 kilometers an hour, sunrise, 607. Thank you for that uh, information. So we're actually at sunrise now in Ukraine. We will have the anthem lined up for you guys at 7 a.m. Kiev time as usual. Uh, I think with that, that con uh, concludes uh, tonight's uh, report uh, for April the 13th of 2022. I'm going to be with you guys for the majority of the night, though. However, I'm going to take a quick break for a little while. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of upgrades to the stream this evening uh, and a whole bunch of uh, other upgrades to the channel as a whole over the course of this evening. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, I hope to have a um, uh, a pretty good uh, a, a pretty good um, uh, report together for you guys. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to be trying a couple different things, and uh, I think uh, it'll be pretty interesting to see how that uh, pans out. Um, yeah, uh, if any of you missed out on this update, we will be uploading it as usual to the YouTube channel uh, after um, uh, after it is done uh, live. We upload them to the YouTube channel all the time. Census Neighbor, thank you for tuning in. Annette, thank you for tuning in. Andy, thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, to everybody that tuned in tonight, thank you guys so much for stopping by tonight. If you could, hit that like button. Uh, if you could, always hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to get notifications. Um, uh, it, it, it's... it's uh, it's imperative that if you if you aren't subscribed, it, you do subscribe because then you'll get notifications when our streams go live and when our new videos go live. Um, if you need any of the links to any of our sources or information, you can find that stuff in the description below the live stream uh, on YouTube. If you're on Twitch, you'll have to hop over to YouTube to get a lot of that information. You can always join our Discord, though. That is the ultimate source for information about this not only this conflict, but everything uh, surrounding our channel. Uh, the Discord is the place to be. Again, the invite link to that is uh, nemico.gg, or sorry, uh, uh, discord.gg slash nemico. You can find a link to that in the description below the live stream. Um, as well as any other links, again, to our sources. Uh, there's links there where you can donate to, to Ukraine directly. There's actually a QR code on screen that you can scan if you want to help uh, help out UNICEF uh, in their in their aid to Ukraine. You can uh, do that with that QR code there. Um, also, make sure to check out, uh, again, all the other links we have uh, to our many community sources in the, uh, in the description below the live stream. Uh, we are live every night uh, on, on weekdays, uh, with the exception of some weekend dates uh, with announcements. Uh, we are are live uh, 9 p.m. to east uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time um, uh, every evening. I believe that's about 4 o'clock a.m. Uh, uh, Kiev time, if I'm not mistaken. So on the clock on screen here, it'd be about 4 a.m. Uh, for those reports, we're on our new reporting schedule. Tonight was our third report on our new uh, reporting schedule. Uh, and as we move forward again, I've, uh, I, I, I'm on call. So uh, not only are we doing that nightly report, but during the day, I also hop in occasionally for uh, kind of micro reports and to hang out with you guys during the day. Uh, Pay close attention to the Discord announcements channel uh, when, uh, for when I go live for those kind of uh, uh, micro-reports, so to speak, is what I'm calling them. It's really just what I hop in for a few hours to hang out with you guys, and uh, we, we talk about what's going on, and uh, I, I kind of give some reports as they come in. Matt, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, again, uh, I'm hoping tomorrow's update uh, will have a lot more information on some of the unconfirmed events that have happened, like this warship, the chemical attacks. We've been waiting for this information to kind of uh, trickle in. So not only tomorrow will we have, uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of information on some of those things coming at you, but we're going to have a new format and we'll have uh, some new, uh, we'll have some new things uh, as for our format here, kind of set up for you guys moving forward. Uh, we're going to be again for the 24/7 cam stream. I'm making a whole bunch updates to that there's been a whole i've been collecting feedback for about a month now uh in order to uh, redesign our layouts and make things uh, uh better suited for the community and what their demands are there uh Proc frog says nemico take a bath we want a fresh suit tomorrow uh you can't wear the same uh suit uh uh 
as lost night as lost night again yeah uh, again I'll be uh, we'll be doing some uh, uh, upgrades to the avatar and uh, to the stream and to the reports and and and, and basically the whole nine yards uh, HR producer says you're welcome I actually had my 14 year old Linkatron uh, help and pull all the questions uh, that is uh, that's his YouTube name uh, it's a family affair well thank you so much HM producer and thank you so much to Linkatron uh, for for uh, pulling those questions for me um, uh, again I'm going to kind of keep a list of some of those things uh, as you send those notes I'm kind of keeping I'm compiling all that data uh, I answered a few from that list there uh, that seemed uh, seemed worthy um, and uh, again I can always save some of those questions again for uh, for further reports here or for later in the evening, actually, when I come back from a little break. Uh, but again, uh, thank you to everybody uh, that's that's been tuning in tonight. Uh, again, this was our uh, our Ukraine war report for April the 13th uh, of 2022. Um, and uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for tomorrow's report. Uh, stay tuned into our Discord announcements channel for when we go live over the course of the day with random reports. And until next time, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in.